evening, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This is Hunter here, and I'm here with uh, the pride of Idaho, Scott. Scott, how you doing, sir? Doing well, Hunter. Thanks. All right, good, man. Thank you so much for listening, guys. And we've got our review up for Suicide Squad tonight, which I know is, I would probably say, one of the most anticipated movies of the summer, uh, probably by a sizable margin. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a lot of hype coming up in it coming into this movie and not only hype but um a lot of leaks a lot of trailers a lot of you know we, we've we been kind of led along this suicide path suicide <laughs> squad path up until this point so there's there's been we've known about it so it's kind of i feel like that that was definitely intentional for sure yeah and, can't, and very random because i'm on imdb it's charlie Theron's birthday today and I love Charlie Theron, uh, a.k.a. from Mad Max Fury Road. And it's David the Coveney's birthday <laughs> and Michael Shannon's birthday. All right. Anyway, just had to get that out of the way. So. That's, that's, the birthday, that's the birthday wishes part of the segment. Oh, yeah, exactly. So uh, so I, I'm just, I'm just going to kind of jump in here. You know, you know what? I, I'm going to cut back. I, I'm, I'm going to kind of audible here because uh-oh, I – Uh-oh, uh-oh. Because this is the I feel like since this is a comic book movie, like, it's, it's standard for me to be the one to explain the plot and kind of lead the charge here. And to be totally honest, um, it would be nice to hear this. I mean, look, I, I will be the first to admit, I mean, I'm not I, – I never read a lot of Suicide Squad. I have definitely read some, though, including some of the new 52 that, that's been out. So, um, so – I feel like I know the characters well enough, so I would kind of like to get it, uh, get the point of view of someone who hasn't grown up reading Suicide Squad comics. So, Scott, uh, as far as from what you viewed from the movie, what did you, th- uh, how, what was the plot basically? Um, yeah, so not a besides Joker and um, Harley Quinn, just purely based on like cartoons and more costumes essentially she's very popular for people to dress up as um so i I kind of already knew who she was without knowing who she was um so the joker was really the only person that i was you know familiar with um so but you know so basically um after once Superman has kind of left his carnage, um, the city is under attack again. Um, so what they have to do essentially fight fire with fire as, uh, the young lady says herself. Um, and they round up a bunch of criminals and, uh, crazy people to fight these, um, this, this bad guy or bad girl, I should say, um, enchantress. So that's just, I mean, that's, that's really the skin and bones of it. They come together. You got, you know, character development at some point, you got a little bit of action. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, but essentially it's, they get the band together and go and try and, Uh, fight this person. Um, The government, um, the United States government, is the kind of one orchestrating all of this, so uh, you can tell that there's definitely some animosity between the two. Um, They're they're essentially, they are forced to do this. They had a, the the main thing was that they had a a detonation chip implanted into their neck, so um, the, the main character, the, the boss, I'm sorry, what is the, what's, what's her name? Oh, 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 Amanda uh, Waller, yeah. Yeah, Vi- um, yeah Vi- Miss Viola Davis. Davis. Viola Davis, yeah, yeah. Who, was, who was very, actually was very good in this movie. Yes, she was. Um, she is kind of have one with the finger over the sugar, and if they do anything, step out of line, um, she'll pull it and kill them, and once it's all over... Essentially, they're free to blame it on the criminals. So that's basically the bare bones of the the, the plot uh, going into it. So I and then me personally, all I knew was the Joker, and that was probably the the, the thing that I was more amped up about in the going into this movie was um, I'm I'm a big Jared Leto fan um, <laughs> acting acting wise. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> and not, not a three seconds to Mars fan. I mean, they're okay, but <laughs> this is not really it's not really why I'm a fan. Fair um, enough. So that was kind of my expectation going into it. I kind of had high hopes because I I didn't hate the trailers. Um, and then you go into it. I, I I feel like it's so hard not to talk about expectations and and reviews and critics before you go into these huge movies because it's impossible not to see who's saying what, who likes True. it, who does doesn't like it. Um, it's just part of the game. Um, so I did see that not not very many critics liked it, and <laughs> also I did know some people that really liked it. So yeah, it did. was it was kind of I really wanted to go in with an open mind and be like, you know what, let's just see what they have to offer here. So that was that was my mindset going in. So I'm gonna tell you right now. So I'm just gonna we're gonna jump in with a heavy hit, a heavy hitter. Um, I hated the Joker in this movie. I hated the Joker more than I've hated any interpretation of the character in a live action form. I fucking uh-huh. hate. I hated Joker this time around, and I, I Scott, I couldn't believe. And look, I was the one like I believe in our first trailer review. I was like, dude, I was like, I understand Jared Leto looks different, but give him a chance. Like, I think he could do right. something with this. He I mean, that's what we thought about Heath Ledger. Who, who, who could he have turned into? You know what I mean? Like, true. who would have known? Yeah, no, it's very true, and I fucking hated Jared Leto. I, I, I could not believe how off the mark, like, there, there's points where... Was he, he creepy to you? He wasn't creepy to he me. Wasn't, he wasn't creepy to me at all. I, I was like, okay, you're trying to be creepy, you're trying trying to be psychotic, you might be gay, maybe? Like, it was almost <laughs> like, like he, he was all over the place, and not in the way that, like, a... Right, that a good joker is. Like a focus psychopath is. I know it's kind of like an oxymoron, but he is very like the thing about the Joker. As insane as he is, in how he's even though he says, you know, I never have a plan. The Joker has plans, and it just never felt, even though it, they were trying to establish like, hey, he has a plan to you know reunite with Harley. It just it felt so so shoehorned in, just like the Joker did. There was no reason for him to be in this movie. And even the chemistry he had of Harley Quinn, I thought wasn't very good at all. And I, I, I was to say I was disappointed in the Joker would be a very putting it very mildly. I, I was honestly angry at his portrayal of the Joker. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if this is what we're getting going forward, uh, DC's in fucking trouble because I I hated the Joker in this. Now uh, to flip the script a little bit. Uh, Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie, who let's just get out of the way is fine as hell. Um, I, I was I was totally that guy where in the first I think it's the first trailer she like cracks the window, she bends over. I was like, oh man, I was like, yeah, yeah, bend over a little more. Um, she uh, what? Oh, I'm sorry, was I the only one thinking that? Um, no, I'm just uh, over here. Sorry, man. I thought. She was really awesome at parts. The only thing that killed me about her was that her accent would drop like in and out, and mm-hmm. it got to a point where it was really distracting. Like, and once I noticed it, I couldn't forget it. It was it, almost like I I noticed that too, and it was almost like certain lines she had practiced in an accent, like they were kind of meant to be said in that like, yeah. New York accent or whatever, like, and then. Like as the story was going on, it was just regular conversation. You could tell that it wasn't, it didn't stick. No, I, I that's perfect because that's exactly how I felt, and I was actually mad because, um, look, Margot Robbie. I mean, Harley Quinn's always been a flirtatious character, um, bit psych, psychotic, obviously. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, that scene where she looked the bar, I went from six to midnight. I was like, oh man, I was like, I was like, oh that that lucky bar. Um, I mean, <laughs> but attention, soldier. Yeah, yeah, right. But yeah, no, no, no shooting blanks for me. But I um, mean, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, but she, she was crazy, and I thought they did a good job giving her some stuff to do. But mm-hmm. but the accent though was just killing me, and, and sometimes, and and I don't think they showed really how dangerous she was because she felt like the weakest or one of the weak links um, on the squad, which is, is another issue that I'll address here in a second. You mean you mean like like fighting wise? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like 
I kind of kept going back to that. Like, I get, un- I understand she's crazy and she's basically fearless, which is all essentially a superpower. But she pulls up with a bat and like a large wooden hammer. It's like that just doesn't seem practical. I mean, she's got a, she does have a, a pistol for sure, but. I don't know what her skill set is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I I was a little irritated by that because in the comics, yeah, she's just a psychopath who, but she's like like they didn't bring up the fact that she's like been like she's a gymnast basically, so that leads to her leans to her having really good athletic ability, which leads to her being a great fighter. They like didn't even acknowledge that. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't pick up that at all. Exactly, and that's a key component. <laughs> um. Because the character was introduced in Batman the Animated Series, uh, was never actually in the comics prior to that. Yes, I like some DC stuff for all you people who are like, you only like Marvel, man. Uh, I was actually watching, watching Batman the Animated Series earlier. Um, but she, she's a badass, though. And in some of the comics that she's been in, especially uh, where she teams up with Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn is awesome. And while I thought they did a good job kind of setting a base for how awesome she could be in the future, I didn't think they showcased it enough for the hype, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Again, a lot of people were kind of, a lot of people were anticipating uh, her basically making her debut. Yeah, me too. Um, I was. And, and I count myself as one of those people. But, you know, I, I, she was, she, I will say, though, she was my favorite comic relief. And, uh, she she still pulled it off as being a badass, even because she, she can walk in with a baseball bat and still feel confident about it, which I thought was, I thought they did well with that. Well, speaking of a debut, we need to talk about a reappearance of someone, and he 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 might have put out an album years ago years ago <laughs> called Big Willie Style. Will motherfucking Smith was yeah, amazing in this. Thank God that we've got a. This was like when Eddie Murphy was in Dreamgirls, and people were like, oh my god, Eddie Murphy can act. It's been so long. The last time I liked... Oh, man. So, I thought um, I thought Will Smith was okay in Focus, um, but outside of that, it had been since 2000, uh, 2008 since I liked him in a movie, which was Hancock. It had been a long time <laughs> for, for Will Smith. So, seeing him come back and really put his stamp on the character. Um, Man, I I, got to tell you, Scott, this movie was immediately better than Batman v Superman for me just because of Will Smith, because it was so good to see him be Will Smith. You definitely say that about a lot of movies for sure. Yeah, I feel like if this had Will Smith in it, it would have been a lot better. Like the (laughs) last Independence Day. Including, thank you, including the last Independence Day. Mm Mm-hmm. But, Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, he really did. I, he was he was one hundred percent the highlight of this movie, and I was a little bit worried about it going into it because you don't really know which one you're, which Will Will Smith you're gonna get, and um, he was he was damn good in this movie. I really enjoyed his character. Yeah, I was I was so pleasantly surprised because I was I've seen the trailers. I'm like I don't know. I'm like he could be bad, but there was enough of that kind of old school like. Nah, nah, man, like that, that <laughs> old, like that old Will Smith. But then, you know, him being a there's this one scene where they first start taking on uh, Enchantress's uh, drones, basically, and he just has this point where he just goes all in and he's just shooting everything. And that was the scene I stood up in the theater. I was like, I was like, fuck yes, movie, okay, like, like that was one of those scenes. I was like, damn, okay, yeah, but, that was sick. Now, we've been giving this movie a lot of praise. Here's where the movie falls apart. So the first, I don't know, 30 minutes-ish, I was like, oh, man, this is, this, is going, this is going amazing. But then once they start, once they establish a squad and they kind of get more in the plot, that's when the movie starts to nosedive. And then it nosedives into a third act that, Scott, I'm going to be honest with you, was, was so reminded me of Fantastic Four. And it, it, I, did, I couldn't place it for, like, an hour after, until after I got out of the theater. I was like, 
oh my god, a big giant beam in the sky with really shitty CG. Oh my god, this is Fantastic Four. This is DC's Fantastic Four for the last third. And Enchantress brings her brother back, who looks horrible. It's a God's of Egypt effect. I was like, for fuck's sake. Yeah, uh, it's so hilarious you say that. I wrote down The, the Mummy Returns. Oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's fair, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like the same Egyptian-type, Inca-type, uh, whatever you want to call it, ancient witchcraft, um, like, a- ghost, witch, whatever, god, demigod. It You've seen it a thousand times. It, there was, it was so uh, ununique that it, it, it made it boring. Yeah. Yeah, very, very true. I just, uh, so, I was bummed out, man, because I was sitting there, and I had that Man of Steel feeling again. While I was sitting there for, like, the first half hour, 45 minutes, I was like, oh, man, this is really good. If they can keep this, fuck! And it's like, as soon as I have the thought, um, it turned into a really bad version of Guardians of the Galaxy. That's all I was thinking for, like, the last middle third, like, middle... In the last, uh, in the last third of it, um, not just because both movies have very weak villains, but because one movie does a really good job of incorporating music into its movie because it's ba- like the narrative yeah, plays into I that. Just on this one, on that and one. man, Suicide Squad—they just put, they even played "Spirit in the Sky" for, that was in Guardians of the Galaxy, and I was like, oh, movie, you're really. Like, you're kind of, you're, you're a little bit on the nose there. and you, you shouldn't be able to notice the music that way. You should just start, like, you should be able to feel the movie, not just sitting and listening to music. They played an Eminem song in there. They threw that in there, but they chopped it up as it was going along. Like, there wasn't any scene breaks to chop it up. It was just going from one verse to another, and it clearly didn't go together. It just, it felt really sloppy. <coughs> Yeah, I, I I was disappointed in that man because I, I, I and you know what? Sorry, we we have not even gone through the whole freaking cast. There's so many freaking people in this movie. So you got um oh god, was, so you, Jared Leto obviously um jo- okay. So I will say something I never thought I would say in my lifetime, Scott. Uh, Jai Courtney was good in this movie, <laughs> Scott. I couldn't believe it. So you know I have been not been a fan of Jai Courtney. He's been in those crappy. Uh, Divergence movies or diver whatever the hell it's called. Um, mm. He was in the last Die Hard playing John McClane's son. He was in Terminator Genesis. I fucking hate Jai Courtney so much. He's, he he had a kind of a Wolverine vibe about him. Yeah, no, he's terrible. And this is the first movie where he's been allowed to use his accent. And Son of a Bitch is the best movie he's been in. Um, yeah, you know, excusing the fact his name is. Captain Boomerang, and he throws, like, four goddamn boomerangs the whole movie. I mean, you know, if Cap if Cap threw his shield four times, I'd be pissed off. But, you know, wh- whatever. So, outside of that, um, I thought he was actually good. I actually wanted more Jai Courtney. And, again, I never thought I would ever fucking live to say those words. Um, uh, the, the emotional crux for the movie, I would say, outside of... Um, Will Smith's uh, uh, death shot was uh, Jay Hernandez who played El Diablo and Scott I'm not gonna lie uh, this was the one part of the movie I went you know what okay or, or, or one of the few parts I went you know what I can I can kind of get with this uh, uh, he's based I believe he's new I think he's in new 52 only so he's only three four years old but man I thought the guy who played him, Jay Hernandez, I thought he did a hell of a job with not a whole lot of material, but he was the one I felt actually sympathetic for, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like they really did, took time to develop his character. Like, I wish they would have done with a lot of the other characters. I wanted to know a lot more about Katana. She seemed like a total, she would be a total badass. I had no idea about Slipknot. These are like, to me, as an outsider to comics, they seem like the B-list superheroes, and I don't know a lot about them, so if you want me to enjoy the movie fully, I, I need, you need to give me a little bit about them, and I feel like the little bit that they gave me just wasn't sufficient, or they just didn't go about it enough. They kind yeah. of, it was very choppy. I, I tend to disagree with you. I, I didn't really enjoy the first part of the movie really? um, as much. I feel like it was a little bit choppy in the character int- introduction and the development. I feel like 
I found out about more people than uh, certain people than others, and it just kind of jumped into it. They did it didn't. I don't I don't know what it, what are they doing over there. I'm not sure. It, it's it's it's. I always come out of their movies going, what was wrong with that? Like I don't I can never put my finger on it, but it just doesn't have that feel like that when you walk into like Iron Man or the Avengers that you you feel like you're sucked into it. I'm just never I've never felt that way about the last few most of the you know newer DC movies and it's just hard to I don't know I I really want to go in there and be like ha huh, it it's not that Rotten Tomato score or like yeah. it, it was a really good movie and shove it like finally DC did something right but I don't know it's just just like all the other movies it's just hard for me to put my finger on exactly the you know the thing that I really dis- disliked about it I could I can come up with a few things watching it but I mean it's I, I don't know. I, they, they, it's, it's like Marvel has a formula and they just stick to it and it's the same every time. But it's great and it's like they, it's like DC can't find that formula yet. Uh, Scott, Scott, may, uh, can, can, can you time me real quick? I'm gonna need you to time me for five minutes. Because, yeah, go, yeah. Go okay. Ahead. Here's the problem with DC movies. And before I know everyone's gonna be like, you're just on Marvel's nuts. Da da da. This is the big problem, and I've been. Scott, I told you this from jump when they announced this new universe. They were going to rush this shit. They were not going to take the time to build their universe up. They were going to try to catch up to Marvel a lot quicker than they needed to and not set up things. Uh, the thing about Marvel, Marvel had, what, I think seven movies um, before we got to an Avengers? I think it was eight movies now that I think about it. Um, eight movies to set up their universe before they went ahead and we got an Avengers movie. And while some people were like, that's dumb, why do I have to wait so long? It worked because you have the luxury of not needing to develop every single mm-hmm. fucking character because you'd already done it in their solo movies. The pro- the, I'm sorry, the, just say, nobody knows, nobody knows about, nobody knew about Ant-Man before. Like, if they would have just thrown him in there, that would have been, I feel like that would have been just completely, you know, like out of left field. Sorry, yeah, no, no, you're no, you're 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 totally good, and and that's that's what kills me because DC has so many good characters. They have Green Green Lantern, they have the Flash, they have Cyborg. I would like to see a Flash, a good Green Lantern movie, um, a new Batman, and a good fucking Superman movie at least before I would get a su- before I would get a Justice League movie. I, I just I I don't get why they're rushing. So, okay, I apologize. We got five movies before we got Avengers. But still, five fucking movies, two Iron Man movies, an Incredible Hulk, a Thor movie, and a Cap movie before we got the Avengers. I mean, they took their time. I mean, and I I, I just, I don't get it, man. I, I know DC wants to catch up. I get that. And, yeah, are there movies making money? Yeah, I mean, Batman v Superman didn't do what they expected it to. Man of Steel did well, but, again, did probably not what they wanted um I, I this movie it broke the record for uh august uh highest opening in film in august so you know what the fuck ever but it's going to be very interesting to see what the drop off is going to be from people being you know like okay i don't want to see this shit anymore uh yeah so it opened at uh $135 million, so the prior record was Guardian Galaxy's 94.3, so yeah, smash it out of the water. Uh, what is key, though, is that Suicide Squad isn't going to open in China. China just went, yeah, we don't want it. So, <laughs> since that's the biggest, that's the second biggest international, the second biggest world market for movies, it's going to be interesting to see how Suicide Squad turns out. They say they need to make about $700, $800 million, so they've to be profitable, so it, it, it's got a bit of a climb. It's it's at two sixty seven million right now, but that drop off is going to be key. So um, I just gotta say, Scott, before I kind of let you jump back in here, look, I was rewatching Batman the Animated Series earlier today. Um, 
DC has been bitch slapping Marvel for the better part of 20 years when it comes to their animated divisions. Their animated movies are incredible. I went and saw Batman Mask of the Phantasm in theaters when I was eight years old because I love Batman so much. So I went and saw The Killing Joke like two weeks ago. Killing Joke sucked. We'll have a review for that this week. Um, but um, I love DC's universe. I really do. So when people are like, you only like Marvel, I'm like, no, I actually don't. I love DC shit too. What k- kills me about this, and you pointed it out in our Justice League trailer review, um, Zach goddamn Snyder, he was a producer on this, and he's kind of helping oversee shit right now. And damn it, Scott, he just, <laughs> they, they need to keep him away from these movies because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. And you know, I thought Man of Steel, while it had its problems at points, I was like, oh, this is good. But then it was just dive bomb in a way I couldn't believe. And Batman v Superman, Lord knows we've talked about that. And this third act of this movie from the last fight scene that's like in water, which is really fucking weird, to um, to, to to the team being assholes, but because they want you to like them at the end of the movie, being like, hey, this is a group of ruthless fucking killers, but they can't kill any humans because we want you to like them at the end. Um, it, it, the movie is just jarring, and it screams studio interference. Um, it, it, it feels like they probably left at least 45 minutes on cutting room floor, at the very least, that probably need to be added back in, just like Batman v Superman, because DC won't leave the directors to fuck alone and let them do their shit. It just, it screams that, this whole movie. And David Ayer is a pretty good director. I mean, you know, he's done some some sh- shitty shit. He did that last movie that Arnold did, uh, Sabotage. You remember that movie? Uh, try not to. I did. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You know he, he he you know hey everyone everyone has a miss every now and then but he uh, he wrote uh, a movie you really enjoy he wrote Fury um, with Brad Pitt he wrote End of Watch uh, he wrote Trading Day I mean he wrote the original Fast and Furious like he's done some shit that's actually good he wrote SWAT which was unfortunate but he's like written you know he's written some good shit so I I, I was really disappointed that. This came from him, so I, I really do think a lot of the movie's shortcomings are the blame on the studio, but uh, to, to, to kind of get to my final ratings, man, I, I, I'm, I, I feel, you know what this movie is? It's a movie trying to be dark when it's not dark. It's like saying Sum 41 is it's punk rock. It's like saying that... <laughs> <laughs> No, it, I like it, that. I like that. It, it's like saying, you know, like, you, you know, high high end L A is urban because there's a boondocks like graffiti painting on one of the walls for one of the restaurants. Like it, it's it's that level of we're trying to be dark, but it's a PG thirteen rating. This really needs to be a rated R rating, by the way. That's like I don't say that often for animated uh, for um pardon me for. Uh, the comic book films, but this needed to be rated R uh, to really kind of get where it needed to go. Um, I did enjoy some of the Easter eggs that were in here. Um, there's just, there, there's a few. I mean, um, the one that I immediately noticed that made me uh, pretty happy is when you see uh, the Joker, you know, in his black tux with the flower uh, with uh, with Harley Quinn, you know, and uh, Amanda Waller's explaining, you know, how they're the queen queen of Gotham. Um, it was a cool throwback uh, to uh, to that to actual comics where there's a painting of that. So I, I I thought that was awesome, and to see Harley Quinn even for a second in her actual jester costume was a cool, you know, for just me being a nerd was a cool like oh shit cool uh, moment to it, but. Man, DC, you guys got to get this together. I mean, you really do. This is the third time. And by the way, fuck you guys for going with the new 52 origin for Harley Quinn. I fucking hate that. But uh, I hate the Joker. Um, I love Will Smith. I love uh, uh, Viola Davis. I really enjoyed Margot Robbie at points. Jai Courtney and Juan Mora. So there's good stuff here. But the plot just fucking folds within itself. So I'm going to give this... 
Oh, God. I've been thinking about my rating all day. <laughs> I'm going to give me, it... Go with your gut, Hunter. I'm going to give it a solid C+. Plus. Wow. I, 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 you know, so I guess... You know, DC's and Which is, I mean, that's not, that's, <laughs> let's be honest, that's not great for the superhero comic book movie we've, we've been reviewing lately. No, it's not. I mean, it, this, this is, I, I saw one of my one of my friends text me, he's like, dude, I like this better than Civil War. I'm like, you should hang yourself. This is not even fucking, this is not even the same goddamn stratosphere as Civil War. I'm like, Civil War, this is as good as Age of Ultron, which has many problems, but... The, yeah, I, I, this is DC's best movie since that not directed by someone with the last name Nolan. So you know, hey, <laughs> I guess that's improvement. But uh, yeah, overall, really disappointing. It had some real potential, and I think if there's a, you know, Edgar Wright should really be doing one of these movies. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I know he got kicked off of Ant Man, but. God, I was sitting there the whole time thinking, Edgar Wright could do this. Edgar Wright could find that way, you know, after writing and directing Scott Pilgrim to poke fun at it, but still make it badass, and they need someone like that. Um, so, yeah, C-plus for me. Uh, Scott, your final thoughts, sir. Yeah, um, definitely uh, disappointing overall, even though I kind of knew what to expect going... Not what to expect, but what other people had thought about it going into it. Um there's some silliness in it that are it's more dumb than like silly. They kind of tried to walk the line again about being too funny or like dark enough. They have like a really they're really struggling trying to find that line. Um and there's just a couple things like when um Diablo writes by in fire at one point uh, just to say like screw you kind of thing like leave me alone like that's okay that's really that's super cool that he did that um I thought I didn't hate the Joker I just thought the laugh was bad like the it laugh was, just, was bad like I I like understand when exactly and I I understand him trying to reinvent the character and trying to do his own thing and I thought the he had the look um, he, he like looked crazy, but he just didn't act crazy enough after, I feel like I might be a little bit spoiled with Heath Ledger's interpretation, but I mean, he didn't seem sinister. He just seems like just silly, if that makes any sense. He's no, just that a does. Bit, and I, I, you know, I'm a big Jared Leto fan. I wanted to like him, but it just wasn't coming through. Harley Quinn, I really enjoyed a lot more than I thought that I would. I thought she would be annoying, but she was actually the funniest one there. Uh, Will Smith pulled it, man. Big Will. Uh, yeah, man. It was Not the freak uh, this, yeah, yeah. You know all the freak this, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, pardon me. Go ahead. <laughs> such a big surprise and a pleasant surprise at that. Uh, I thought he might be the weakest link in this group, and he turned out to be the the strongest. So that was nice to see it. They didn't feel like bad guys to me and they didn't instill fear or, um, some sort of psychopath mentality where they just kill everybody and have no, uh, just no feeling at all. But it, you get some emotional parts in this movie. You get to know some of the characters, which I appreciate. I you, you understand that they are bad guys for a reason, but I feel like I didn't I didn't feel I didn't fear excuse me I didn't fear fear them. It was just like a ragtag group of criminals, not really like psychopaths, and that's really one of what I wanted to see. Um, I don't know. Plot was not strong enough. Um, I feel like I've seen that villain before. Weak villain. I, when I first saw um, Entrances, en, Entrances, Enchantress, uh, Enchant, yeah. excuse me, Enchantress. Uh, how about that? How about that? Um, I thought it was she was cool looking and she was the scariest part. But once they developed her into the you know basically the villain. It was kind of forced. It was, I don't know, it didn't really fit. They did, they, it's like they were just, 
it, it just didn't feel right. I don't know. What, I, it's hard for me to talk about this movie because it's just one of those movies that didn't feel right. It didn't feel like it, it fit together correctly, like the climaxes came when they were supposed to or when it was supposed to be an emotional or character development point of the movie. It just They just weren't able to hit the mark, and I was, I was pretty disappointed. Um, Will Smith definitely kept it. Um, above a respectable or an un, not very respectable grade, I should say. Um, so I went with a solid C on this movie. You know, it's funny. Um, I just thought of something that I hated, and I'm gonna knock my grade down to the C because I just realized the end of the movie when like everyone's talking about, uh, you know, Amanda Waller is like, hey, okay, fine, we can help you guys out. What do you guys want? And Deadshot's like, hey. Uh, you know, I want to be able to see my daughter. By the way, his daughter, whoever played his daughter, was a horrible actress. Oh, my <laughs> God. She, she, it was like the little girl from that Annie remake they did, that nappy-headed little girl. I was like, oh, my God, you were terrible in this. But, um, when, but Killer Croc is like, I want BET. I was like, oh, cool, racism. Oh, I didn't know I was watching Transformers. So I didn't yeah. even know that guy was black until they started making racial references to about yeah. him. I'm like, okay, yeah, that doesn't really have to be... Yeah, like, yeah, so C. C for this movie. <laughs> you lost your plus. You also, to... I have one other thing I wrote down. There's a Samsung spot in this movie. Yes, there is. When the, he throws his boomerang, which happens to be... A, a boomerang throws his boomerang, and it happens to be a fucking camera, apparently. And yeah. they're watching it on his Samsung smartphone. And now, I don't know, I, one of the things like, ugh, ugh, they just don't get it. You don't get it. No, I, I no, I, I agree, man. And I, 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 I just gotta say, man, and I, I don't think I t- harped on this enough. Look, Margot Robbie is sexy as hell. We all acknowledge this, but I was sitting there, it felt pretty exploitive with her character. Like, it got to a point where it wasn't even sexy. It was like, it was Michael Bay level of, oh, hey, let's have a grind on this cage. Oh, hey, let's have a grind on Common. Common was in this movie for, like, a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets shot. And then Scott Eastwood, Clint Eastwood's boy, he's the one who detonated the bomb. And they don't even give him a fucking name, I don't think. I was like, why are you two in this movie? Like, like there was all this fan speculation. Like, oh, who's Common going to be playing? going to be playing, like, a new big up-and-coming villain. No, he's literally killed within three minutes. I, Monster T is the name. Yeah, just, God. Oh, my Lord. Just, DC, get it together. Get it together. It shouldn't be this hard. It really shouldn't be this hard for them to get... This, this should have been a really good movie, and that's a little bit aggravating, honestly. Like, this was... I was excited about this movie. Like, I at one point, I was really, really hyped about seeing this movie, it's like, man, not a lot of people can hype up a movie like that and let you down quite like DC. Well, hey, we got Doctor Strange in November, so, so hopefully that's good. But, cause, hey, they can't fuck up Benedict Cumberbatch, can they? We'll I, I I hope not. I mean, well, hey, I mean, we got new Sherlock next year, so regardless. Well, if they, not all bad. Yeah, so yeah, we'll be fine right either way. But, Love uh, you, Benny. Call me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm such a cumber bitch. I'm fully. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> what I what that's, that's brilliant. What, that's what no, that's what the fans call them. So they're cumber bitches. I'm a proud cumber bitch. Won't even lie. He, he can he couldn't even he wouldn't even have to call me the next morning. That's how okay I'd be no, with it. I think but, you're more of a cumber cock. But <laughs> sure, but like. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for listening. You can uh, list, uh, subscribe to us here on SoundCloud at the Real Pineapple Seven Seven Five. You can follow me on the Twitter at J Hunter Real Pineapple. You can follow Mr. Scott Nearman on Twitter at Nearman the First. And you can follow our colleague who is starting a new job tomorrow. Have a great day tomorrow, Colin, uh, at the Real O'Neill. Uh, guys, thank you so much. We'll have reviews coming up this week for. A midnight special. Uh, God, what else come out this week? Sausage party, and we're gonna throw something else in there, but definitely for those two guys. Stay tuned for the boss. <laughs> oh God, Almighty, guys! Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.